All right, let's look at some notes receivable and some of the uh, working parts for note receivables. Let's go ahead and get started on October the 1st up here. It says Black Company receives a 9% interest bearing note from Reese Company to settle a $20,000 account receivable. The note is due in six months, and then at December the 31st, Black should record interest revenue of, okay, well, this is accrual basis accounting at its finest. So we kind of need to understand, um, you know, what's going on here. Um, looks like Black Company had a receivable for $20,000 with Reese Company. Reese Company didn't pay. And instead of just writing it off, uh, Reese said, well, you know what? Let's make a more formal instrument, a note receivable for the same $20,000. I'm going to pay you interest on it, and you relieve me of my account receivable. Okay, we're replacing, from from the perspective of Black Company, we're, we're replacing an account receivable asset with a note receivable asset. And from the perspective of Reese Company, we're replacing a uh, an accounts payable with a notes payable. So Black is our payee, and Reese is our maker. Okay. So if it says here, the final question says on at December the thirty first, um, Black should record interest revenue of. Okay, so let's take a look here at the relevant numbers. We've got $20,000 note. It's a note receivable. Interest rate of 9%. But it's a six-month note. So for our purposes, we're going to use a 360-day year and assume... Um, that each month is 30 days. That's not exactly accurate, but that's okay. All right, so let's take a look here at what we would have. 20,000 times 0 0.09 times uh, 180 divided by 360 equals $900. Okay, but I want you to understand that that $900 is the total interest uh, revenue that we're going to have. The question says at December the 31st, Black should record interest revenue of. Well, October, November, and December is only three months, three months out of six. So we're going to take this 900 here. And we're going to multiply that by um, 90 over 180. We could have just as easily done 3 divided by 6, whatever. Um, the point is, is that $450 of this revenue is going to be for one year and $450 is going to be for the next year. So we take our $900 and we multiply by 90 days over 360. And that's going to give us $450 for our answer. There it is right there. All right. Let's, um, let's look at... Um, the, the next question here, it says, on August 1st, Kim Company accepted a 90-day note receivable as payment for services provided to Hun Company. Terms of the note were $20,000 face value and 6% interest. On October the 30th, the journal entry to record the collection of the note should include what? All right. So let's see here, August, September, and then October. So from August 1 through October the 30th, October the 30th is in fact 90 days. Okay, 
So it says the journal entry to record the collection of the notes should include a, all right, so let's look at choice A. It says a credit to note receivables for 20300 Well, this is uh, not, not a horrible answer, but what we've done here, why does it say 300 Well, it's because they've taken the 20000 multiplied it by 6% times um, 90 over 360 gives us 300 okay but the note receivable itself is only for the face amount of 20,000 they're saying we're going to credit it for 20,300 well we can't do that because we only set it up for $20,000 to begin with so that's a wrong answer wrong answer all right let's think about this Choice B, it says debit to interest receivable for $300. Interest receivable is an asset, and so that would have been uh, that would have been set up initially um, with, as a as a debit. Okay, we would have had a debit to interest receivable. Uh, when we set this note up for $300, and this is all within the same year. So we're not going to do it again. We would actually go ahead and credit interest receivable uh, when we get the $300 in interest. So this is also an incorrect answer. Choice C, it says a credit to interest revenue for $300. Well, that sounds right. Um, and then finally, choice D says a debit to notes receivable for 20000 Well, now, the choice D, that's what we did when we set it up. We would actually need to credit notes receivable now, but it says debit, so that's wrong. Here is our correct answer, choice C. We do have interest revenue of $300, and it is earned. Okay. Let's see here. How can we move this around? Okay, very good. We're right here. It says the 60-day 9% note for $10,000 dated May the 1st is received from a customer on account. The maturity value of the note is... Okay, I threw this question in here because students have had trouble with stuff like this. We're going to, and I think this is why they have trouble. We need several components here. We need uh, to get to um, maturity value. We need face value plus interest. So um, our face value is the $10,000. Okay. We're going to multiply that by 9% and then by 60 over 360. So let's go ahead and clear this calculator out here and do that. We have 10,000 times 0 0.09 times 60 divided by 360 equals $150. Okay, but that's not what the question is asking us for. So all we do once we've calculated our amount of interest is we simply add the face value to that. This number here and this number here together equals our maturity value of $10,150. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and um, look at, if we can fit this on here, bear with me one second. Okay, I am back. We have a little matching exercise that we're going to do real quick. Hopefully you have done this on your own already. It says match each description to the appropriate term, A through H. 
We have uh, face amount, term, interest, dishonored note, uh, so on. You could probably use a process of elimination, but we're not going to do that. We're going to try to we're going to try to do as little of that as possible. A formal written instrument of credit that represents amounts due from customers. Well, that's what we've been talking about. That is G, a notes receivable. Next one, it says the amount due that must be paid at the due date of a note receivable. That is the face amount plus the uh, interest. So let's see here. That should be D, maturity value. The amount charged for using the money of another party. What do you think? Interest rate? Probably the answer here is just going to be interest. I did not do these in advance, so hopefully I'm right. The stated rate charged for using the money of another party. Hmm. Well, this would be the interest rate. The stated rate charged for using the money from somebody else is the interest rate. A note that is not paid when it is due. Okay, well, let's just see here. Maker, dishonored note. Okay, I don't really care for the definition here. Um, a note that is paid when it is due, um, a note that is not paid when it is due is just past due. Okay, a note that is not going to be paid is a dishonored note. Um, that is our best answer for this. So we're going to go ahead and assume that that is our answer. Uh, the dollar amount stated on a promissory note, hopefully by now you know, is the face amount. Uh, the party, the I'm sorry, the party promising to pay a note. This is the maker of the note or the borrower. And finally, it says uh, the time uh, between the date a note is issued and the and the due date of the note. That is the term of the note. All right, that concludes our handout videos for our receivables chapter. Uh, if you have any questions, send me an email.